Who would have thought that a church would have experienced growth during a time of physical separation? Literally, you're not allowed to come into the building. And even through that, the, the foundations of the gospel in the life of the believer and how not only does the gospel save, but the gospel leads you to growth. To me, it just, it just is a demonstration of the sufficiency of the gospel of Christ in the life of the believer, both for sustainment of the, the, of the body and then for the growth of the church. I think one of the best things about COVID actually was really being able to invest in the e-groups. And I think it was honestly one of the first times in my Christian life that I really experienced this whole like mindset of bearing each other's burdens sure. and just was something that we really looked forward to. Using technology to connect and, and grow and pray together and experience the body of Christ remotely. But it was just so awesome to watch God bring these people together from diverse walks of life, um, different, different stages of Christian growth, and everybody contributed and everybody, I think, benefited even though we were physically separated, God al allowed for those groups to, to continue the cohesiveness, right, that is a part of being a, uh, in the body of Christ. And it's just, it's been a, a real blessing to be a part of that. During quarantine, it was kind of, I had a unique experience of being able to come to church and be involved still because somebody had to sing and somebody had to play the piano, and so I got to be one of those people. And um, it, was, it was cool to be able to come in. It was weird to come in and be playing for nobody and still everybody at the same time. And then, you know, during, during quarantine, Pastor Lance had this idea of like, okay, we, need to, we wanna get music out to people. He asked me at one point to do an arrangement of Waymaker. And then, you know, we were able to record it at the church and then shot the video, you know, outside, socially distanced. And, it, it was it was cool that the music team was able to like kind of take time um, out of their schedules and and you know pull that pull that together when it was it was really something that that many people hadn't done before. Anything that we can do as a church through a team through a group to further the outreach of the the gospel message, whether it's through a video or whether it's through an e-group or whether it's through being a greeter at the door, right? Um, I think those are worthwhile endeavors to spread the, the message of the gospel and, and to push that out past the doors of our church. Honestly, when I look at my kids and I just think about how I want them to grow up and what I want them to know about who Jesus is, and I know that everything Emmanuel is putting out is pointing them to Jesus, it just yes. makes me want to invest everything I have in it. Yes. And it, it doesn't matter if it's just me showing up to just fill a role that's empty or you know, just even putting them over at the school where I know that they're getting a Christian education. The impact that that a gospel-centered ministry has, it's a, it's a life-changing experience. You have to choose where you're going to invest. So why not invest in a place where you can walk in and look around and be involved in that change, right? Whether it's changing your own life through the gospel, whether it's changing kids' lives as they grow and mature in the gospel, whether it's changed in a new believer's life as they come in and they experience what the gospel is and then they watch them begin to grow. And, and knowing that you've had a chance and an opportunity, really, to invest in that change, regardless of what that change is for you, is just such an uplifting experience because you, you realize, I had a small part in that. And having that small part in gospel change is why we're here.